Chuck, you, you've sort of uh, hinted at, you know, there are, there are problems with social security, maybe not today, but there are problems pending. Um, and I was wondering if you could just give our listeners sort of a, a general uh, uh, concept, concept of how big those problems are. What, are. what are beneficiaries today and in the future facing with social security? Well, my short answer is the problems are big. <laughs> real, real big. <laughs> um, I think most people who follow public policy have at least a passing awareness that there's an issue here, that there's a financing shortfall in social security uh, and lawmakers are gonna have to deal with it. Uh, I think most press reporters get that. Most lawmakers get that. I think most voters get that. Uh, I think they miss how big and how urgent it is for the most part. I think it's much worse much more urgent than people tend to recognize. And when you see it reported on, often there's a tone of, here's the latest trustees report, programs solve until the early 2030s. Gosh, that's a concern, but just keep it in the back of your mind. You know, at some point uh, it's gonna have to be dealt with and politicians will make a little nip and a tuck and everything will be fine. Um, that's not where we're headed. <laughs> we're, we're headed to, I think, a more fundamental implosion of how the program has always operated uh, for the simple reason that the things that have worked in the past to keep the program solvent are not going to work the next time around. Um, you know, back in 1983, when they last did a, a big um, uh, rescue and they rescued the program from insolvency and they made some changes to taxes and eligibility ages and benefits and the like and kept it going, everything was very different. Uh, the annual income was here and the annual outflow was here. They were pretty close together and lawmakers just needed to come together and close that gap. Uh, but what happened after that, uh, you had the baby boomers in the workforce for the next couple of decades. So you had these big surpluses being built up and then the baby boomers hit the retirement rolls and the program went into deficit starting in 2010. And those deficits have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so the program is drawing down that trust fund that was built up when the baby boomers were um, in the workforce to the point where when that trust fund finally is on the verge of running out, the annual shortfalls are gonna be so large, there is no plausible, reasonable likelihood that lawmakers could actually take action to fill that gap on a moment's notice. Uh, one little factoid that I throw out there to accentuate that point is that you know, historically, lawmakers haven't been willing to cut benefits for people already receiving them. We don't go to the 95 year old widow who's been collecting for 30 years and say, now we're gonna cut your benefit. They don't do that. They've never done that. They're never going to do that, uh, which means any changes are gonna to have to be prospective. Uh, they'll affect future taxpayers and future uh, beneficiaries. And if you wait till the 2030s, even if you completely cut off all new benefit claims, just eliminated them completely, the program would still go insolvent. Now, obviously we're not gonna do that either, but even that wouldn't be enough to keep the program solid. So by then the game's over, right? The, the game's long over. We, we can't maintain this type of social security system. Uh, I'm not sure if we pass the point of no return yet. If we haven't, we're getting very close, uh, but it's not something that's just a nip and a tuck. It's not something that can wait to the 2030s to be dealt with. Uh, we're basically making a decision now whether we're gonna have a social security system in the future that resembles the one we've had to date. 